challenge makes it all the more worthwhile you can't even say i will simply listen to the imam reciting you can't you know can't, you can't even listen to the imam you have to recite yourself and subhanallah this this different ramadan for most of us is an opportunity it's a chance for us to bring inside bring bring outside what is really inside of us right if in times of ease when things are going well a lot of people can do well but in the time of difficulty when it is entirely up to you that really is the test. That is really the time, you know, when, as they say, this is this is what separates the the men from the boys, right? Are you What better time to revive your respect for Ramadan than during a Ramadan that is entirely new, during conditions that you have never seen. It is new for your heart. And this novelty, subhanAllah, you can use for your advantage. Our soul, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Kalla bal ala ma kanu yaksibun. No, rather the stain that has covered their heart of that which they are earning. What we have done with our hands, what we have done ourselves, that covers our heart. That covers us. It, it really changes the soul, subhanAllah. And the Prophet he, he explained this verse using vivid imagery. He said, the, the slave, if he commits a transgression, it marks on his heart a black mark. If he recoils in contrition and asks forgiveness and repents, his heart is cleansed, it is polished. And if he returns to it, the marks multiply until they envelop his heart, completely covering him up. Subhanallah. The, the word of the Prophet, وسلم, and this is, and he explained, this is Ran. This is like the rust that covers it. And the word, you know, what happens, the, the, his heart is polished. This is the same word you used if you're trying to clean something that's been completely covered in rust. If you have like, you know, a sword or something that's covered in rust, the Arabs would say, you know, tasqul is safe. You, you, you cleanse it. You, you remove the top layers of things that are undesirable, that are unclean. And the question that I have to myself and to all the brothers and sisters, how much of our hearts has been covered? SubhanAllah, each of us knows himself best. But if you used to feel a certain spirituality and then sometimes it's more difficult to feel it may be because of something that has covered our heart from our own actions it doesn't come out of nowhere it comes out of what we have done the faults you and i fall into you know the anger greed wasting our time looking at what we shouldn't or listening to what we shouldn't backbiting doing things that are generally harmful to you in the dunya and the akhirah or it can also be something entirely more subtle. 
having the heart completely immersed in the dunya itself leads to ghafla and itself leads to the heart being covered. Even if you don't do anything haram, it can just be an over concern for the material without any concern for the spiritual, with little time and dedication to prayer. If you don't think about, if you don't leave time for your soul to grow, if you don't leave time for your soul to be nourished, and this is on a daily basis outside of Ramadan, something's going to happen to it, right? If you don't, if you have the best car in the world or the best whatever, and you don't maintain it, it's going to deteriorate in performance. You have to maintain the soul. And this Ramadan, my dear brothers and sisters, this is the time to make it grow. SubhanAllah, the soul can actually die if you leave it. This is why we need to revive it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives, give, gives the example in the Quran. فَإِنَّكَ لَا تُسْمِعُ الْمَوْتَ وَلَا تُسْمِعُ الصُّمَّ الدُّعَاءَ وَإِذَا وَلَّوْ مُدْبِرِينَ You do not make those who are dead here. You cannot make them here. And you cannot make those who are deaf here. You can't make the, the, the dua to Allah, the invitation to Allah. You can't make them hear it, right? If they turn away. And here, it doesn't mean they're, they're physically dead or they're physically deaf. It means something is covering their heart. And this can happen to any one of us. It isn't something that is foreign. You know, It isn't this thing that happens to other people. It happens to you and it happens to me. And this Ramadan, this Ramadan, my dear brothers and sisters, don't think of it as, as an ibtila. Oh, this is so difficult. I don't have this and I don't have that. And it's, this is the opportunity. This is something completely new. And you can use it to get to somewhere completely new, to get to spiritual heights you have never gotten before. And subhanAllah, one of the best ways, ironically, one of the most effective ways to revive the soul is to remind it of its imminent death. Um, subhanAllah, there, the, this morning I watched a video of a brother, a janazah of a brother who died from COVID-19. SubhanAllah, it was an ominous sight. It was just a handful of people, all in masks, uh, praying far apart from one another. And then as they lowered him to the ground, they read some Quran. And, and, and it was just, SubhanAllah, you look at it and it's vivid and you feel, wow, you know, death happens. It's so real when you see it. You know it's real in your mind, but when you feel it, when you actually look at it, it's just, it's completely different, right? You know, the picture is worth a thousand words. And... When I felt the subhanAllah, this brother, he passed away a few days, you know, a short time before Ramadan. You have made it to Ramadan. You have been blessed with this beautiful month of Ramadan. Don't spend it complaining about the things that you don't have. Don't spend it complaining about this problem and that problem. Have patience, alhamdulillah, and use what you have. You have been given so many blessings, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. You and I have been given what we cannot count. We have some tests as well. But what we have been given is far greater. And subhanAllah, when, when I saw this brother, you know, being, being put into the ground, and you realize the responsibility that you have when you are alive. You remember the verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kullu nafsin maut, thumma ilayna turja'un. Every soul shall taste death, then unto us you shall be returned. Every soul shall taste death. SubhanAllah, the vivid imagery, you, you shall taste it. It's not just you shall die. You will taste it. It's something you experience. And it is something that is far off for a lot of us. We feel like it's, SubhanAllah, oh, death is just something that happens. It happens to other people. You know, it, it's never happened to me before. And it's this thing, it's, it's, it's very strange. You know, we all, we every single person knows it's going to happen to him. But... At the same time, the vast majority of people act as if it's not going to happen to them. And a man once came to Al-Hasan al-Basri, and he complained about people who remind him of death. He said, you know, these people I talk to, and they keep talking to me about death, and they frighten me. And they, what, Why are they talking about this, you know? And Al-Hasan al-Basri said to him, these people are more beneficial to you than those who make you feel safe now. And then on the day of judgment, you find no safety. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, he said, niyam, fa matu intabahu. People are asleep, and if they die, they awaken. They, they actually pay attention to the reality, to what true life is, to the reality of existence. And subhanAllah, you know, each, each of us has moments in our lives 
when we feel we saw something very clearly, when we rose above the dunya, when we felt just spiritually elevated above the day to day, above this problem and that problem and this having to do this and the chores and this, we felt we saw life much larger, right? And this is one of the blessings of the human soul that you can rise to this level. Make your goal this Ramadan to have as many of these moments as possible. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, you know, reminding us of the shortness of life. When he spoke, to, when he speaks to people after they have passed away, he says, قَالَ كَمْ لَبِثْتُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ عَدَدَ سِنِينَ قَالُوا لَبِثْنَا يَوْمًا أَوْ بَعْضَ يَوْمٍ فَاسْأَلِ الْعَادِّينَ قَالَ إِلَّا بِثْتُمْ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا لَوْ أَنَّكُمْ كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ أَفَحَسِبْتُمْ أَنَّمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا وَأَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْنَا لَا تُرْجَعُونَ He will say, what number of years did you stay on earth? They won't give a number. They won't say 60, 70, 80, whatever. They'll say, we stayed a day or part of a day. Ask those who keep count. And Allah will say, you stayed but a little if you had only known. Did you think that we had created you in play without any purpose and that you would not be brought back to us? This, this reminder to, to you and to me, subhanAllah, you know, you even feel this in life sometimes. Sometimes you have a stage in your life. Maybe you're at university or at this school or you're working in a certain job or a certain place. And then that phase ends. You move to somewhere else. You do something different. And you look back on this past and it feels, wow, you know, that was X number of years, but it really doesn't feel that long. And you look at it entirely differently in hindsight. Imagine how that, how looking back on your entire life will be. Will it be something you feel with, with spiritual elevation, something you are proud of, or will it be something else? And this chance in Ramadan, my dear brothers and sisters, subhanAllah, this times like this, they should make us doubt our trust in the status quo, right? It will be like this because I always remember it being like this. But, you know, the current situation we're in, nobody would have imagined it, you know, just six weeks ago. You couldn't have imagined this. Uh, what somebody told you this would happen? What are you talking about? This is ridiculous. This sounds absurd. The entire world shutting down, this happening, that happening. But it happens. Something that is surreal happens. And the most surreal thing that can happen is when your life ends. And it will happen. And it feels far away. It feels, subhanAllah, it, it, it feels you know alien to us. But it will happen. And on that day, all that matters is what you have done. Have you done khair? Have you done good? Has your spirit been elevated? Have you come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the dunya so you may come close to him in the akhirah? Have you connected with the book of Allah? Or has it been left to sit on the shelves? Are you, you one who uses his opportunities that Allah subhanahu wa, gives, subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to him time and time again? Or do we waste them? We're not perfect. No, nobody is. Not a single human being on this earth or who has lived is perfect. Even the Prophet وسلم, you know, as, as, as the best of creation. And yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, عَبَسَ وَتَوَلَّ أَنْ جَاءَهُ الْأَعْمَى Right? He turned away from the blind man. Every single human being can always be better, can always do something that is, that is better. Sallallahu alayhi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he taught us how to improve ourselves. And sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, الْكَيِّسُ مَنْ دَانَ نَفْسَهُ وَعَمِلَ لِمَا بَعْدَ الْمَوْتِ والعاجز من أتبع نفسه هواها وتمنى على الله الأمان. The intelligent one is he who holds himself to account and works for that which is after death. And subhanAllah, you understand from this hadith, it's not the one who is perfect. Nobody is perfect. But he who holds himself to account when he makes a mistake, he holds himself to account. He doesn't just let it pass. He sits and thinks, why did I do this? How can I prevent this? Astaghfirullah, ya Allah, forgive me for this. And he who works for that which is after death. Wal-ajiz, the impotent one, the one the one with no power, is he who follows his desires and, and makes his wishes upon Allah. He does all this and he does all that and he says Allah will forgive. You know, inshallah Allah may forgive, but... If you haven't made any effort, if you haven't tried to protect yourself, if you haven't tried to purify yourself, to elevate yourself, how do you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive? You know, so don't put yourself in that situation of doubt. 
Ask for forgiveness while you can. Pray tarawih yourself at home. Try to finish the Quran in this blessed month. Read it. Understand it. Make it enter your heart truly. And subhanAllah, I have seen nothing, nothing I have seen more spiritually elevating than the Quran, than reading the Quran, reciting the Quran while you understand it. SubhanAllah, the combination of the recitation and the understanding elevates you to a, to a place where you have never been before. And what elevates people spiritually can sometimes be different from some, for some people. You know, for some people it's dua. Make dua as much as you can. Make a list of all the things that you want to make dua about. For other people, it is praying by themselves in the night. For some, it's actually helping others. And it is possible even in these difficult times. Is it hard to, be, to, to keep our worship up in this time? Of course it's hard. But you know what? It's even more of a sunnah to pray tarawih and qiyam alone than it is with a group. The Prophet sallallahu he prayed with a group for a few days and in, in a well-known hadith, Sit down and write down what you want to get out of Ramadan. Write it down. You know, it's always said that people who write down their goals are far more likely to achieve them. Write them down right now, right after you finish. Sit down, write them down. What do I want to get out of Ramadan? Just a few things. I want to read this much Quran. What habit do I want to develop so that I keep after Ramadan? This, this, that. Maybe I want to start praying a few rakahs at night every night or every week. What, how much of the Quran do I want to understand? Try to understand as much of the Quran as possible. Read the tafsir in a language you best understand, right? Recite Alhamdulillah in Arabic, but always re read the tafsir in a, question, in a language you understand. And let me say, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, the Prophet وسلم, died. He famously stood up on the member and said, Man kana ya'budu Muhammad, fa inna Muhammadan qad mat. Wa man kana ya'budu Allah, fa inna Allah hayyun la yamut. He who worships Muhammad, he who worships Muhammad, let him know that Muhammad has died. But he who worships Allah, let him know that Allah is living, ever living, and does not die. And today, we can say something similar. If your, if your goal to worship or what was driving you to worship was really the atmosphere, the community atmosphere, as beautiful as that is, but if that was what you was making you worship, this Ramadan, it is gone. But if your worship was driven by your love of Allah, by your desire to spiritually elevate yourself, then that is always there and does not go. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who are guided, among those who use this Ramadan to the best of their ability. Among those who remember death and use it to better use their life. And at, finally, let me close with the beautiful ayah. شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنَ هُدًا لِلنَّاسِ وَبَيِّنَاتٍ مِنَ الْهُدَى وَالْفُرْقَانَ The month of Ramadan in which the Qur'an was revealed as a guidance for the people and clear proofs of guidance. It is for you to be guided if your heart is uncertain. If you feel no peace, this guidance, this is what will give you. If the, you know, the, the political and economic turmoil is, is getting to you, this peace, this guidance in your heart, you get from the Quran. And that criterion to help you separate truth from falsehood, which can be very difficult in uncertain times. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. May he make us among the people of the Quran. May he make us among those who get close to him in Ramadan and stay close to him after Ramadan. Wa akhru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa jazakumullahu khair.